Moron. 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 Ha! I'm a moron. British ship gas. Moron here. And <laughs> now, uh, here's the deal, guys. I was supposed to do a, a Footnight Quick Pull Guide today. I've been running him a lot lately in, in my attempts to up my Footnight game because he, he didn't used to be like one of my most played heroes. He was probably my second least played after the Ranger Veteran, um, who I've been enjoying lately. So I thought I'd up my game in the, on the Footnight and I had three or four extremely boring games. And what I mean by that is just that nothing of interest happened. It ran too smoothly and there wasn't really much to talk about in the game, right? And then I had the perfect game. I was like, yes, this is the one. Awesome. Like, uh, I had two clutches, all the green circles. It was perfect. There were several occasions where I could really talk about all the amazing things regarding the footnight. And I forgot to click record on that game. Yeah. So I had three absolutely <laughs> horrific games. <laughs> and the one game that I was like, yes, perfect. This is the one. And then I realized I had forgot to click record. Moron. <laughs> Anyways, uh, instead, I thought today we'd do a slightly easier video. So I have at least until tomorrow to get a proper Footnight game in. And instead, I thought I would talk about my top 10 most mad lad moments working in 7 Eleven. Now, 7 Eleven is very different in Denmark than it is in the United States, at least. I don't know about the rest of Europe, but at least uh, it's very different from the United States in that it's actually quite an expensive sort of high-end convenience store where things were often overpriced as hell but still really high quality so like we would hand make sandwiches of like six different varieties like we have good produce we uh, we would have like uh, uh, baked pastries like fresh pastries every single morning and i mean every morning and i worked there primarily as a night shift for uh, roughly speaking two years in the weekends but i have some day shifts as well and let me just say because i had I'd be there like for the night shift, I'd be there at like 9 o'clock in the evening and my, uh, my colleague would leave at like 9.30 and then I'd be alone until like uh, 6 o'clock in the morning and then I would leave at 6.30, right? And I'd do that Friday and Saturday. And a lot of shit <laughs> went down because we didn't have night shifts when I started working there and then we started having night shifts. And this was in a city called Hellerup, which is like if, if you were like, if you're Danish and you thought of a place where rich people live, immediately just think of hello that's like the, the default rich area uh, the rich commune in Denmark essentially which it's gonna be interesting because there's a very particular kind of very spoiled wannabe gangster 14 15 year olds that live in that city just gonna put that out there but uh, today I thought we'd go through the top 10 most mad lad moments I had working in that 7-eleven now just super quickly just to add a little bit of context I thought I would show you guys a couple of pictures so here it is this is uh, the 7-eleven I worked in right here two entrances one on each side which was annoying as hell because that made that made it really difficult sometimes if people decided to run when you caught them stealing uh, also it's a train station that's very common in Denmark that 7-elevens are located as and like are a sort of a subgroup uh, of DSB which is a train company that no one likes and everyone hates um, so we also sold tickets and stuff like that, which could actually be really annoying from time to time, not gonna lie. But anyway, so I just thought I'd give you guys a little bit of a visual input that this is... That's the 7-Eleven, essentially. Um, now, I started out working not as a night shift, but during the day, right? Uh, after school, and there were sort of... Uh, we had this freezer filled up with really expensive small Ben & Jerry's. Because again, think about it, it, it's already an expensive shop. And it's an even more expensive shop because it's located in the most expensive part, at least one of the most expensive parts of Denmark, right? And so we have these Ben & Jerry's, which cost like 80 kroners, 85 kroners, which is like, I don't know, like 16, 18 dollars, something like that, uh, for like this tiny little Ben & Jerry's ice cream thing, right? And on my first week, right, I think it's my second or third shift ever, and there's just this guy with a huge black sports jack, uh, sports bag around his, uh, you know, one of these yeah, sports things. And he's just grabbing Ben and Jerry's, right? And I immediately get a little bit suspicious, okay? Like, I've hung around bad people before. 
I know how they think. I know what they look like. <laughs> and I've had no shortage of, of, I wouldn't say friends, but of people I knew who stole shit in, in stores, right? So I sort of uh, had an insider's look into what people do. And I, could, I was really good at spotting thieves, in my own personal opinion, at least. Um, and this guy was just too obvious. And I chased him for three kilometers out of the shop. And we're not allowed to do that, okay? But it's just, it's just to give you an impression of how my boss viewed me, right? Because it's one of my first shifts, and I chased this guy out of the shop in the middle, broad daylight, right? And he just looks back with the face of terror, and I just keep running. And he, leave me alone! And he just keeps running, and after like a couple of kilometers, I'm like, okay, maybe I should get back to my coworker. I can't just keep chasing him. You know, I'm, I'm trying for several minutes. I'm just chasing at full fucking speed after this guy. And my boss was like, you're, you're technically not allowed to do that, but uh, good job, good job. <laughs> right, because that guy is never, ever coming back to that 7-Eleven. Like, the face of terror he had as he realized that I was actually going to chase him. Whew, it was mm, mm, delicious, delicious. <laughs> so uh, I'll just give you guys a little bit of uh, an impression. Then we had a, a, this really odd dude who looked like a really nice, friendly, slightly nerdy kid who came one day. Uh, whilst me and one of my co-workers, who, a good friend of mine, was working in, in the day. And he asked if he could buy, like, uh, loose cigarettes. So, like, if he could buy, like, a couple of cigarettes, you know, just outside of a box. Fortunately, no one who was working that day had any cigarettes. So, uh, so I said, I'm, I'm sorry, you can't. Um, after, you know, checking up. Then he went back in the line. And, and like, two minutes later, I'm like, he asks me the exact same question in the exact same way. And I'm like, Couldn't, is he trolling me? I'm like, oh, no, no, sir, I'm sorry, we, we, we don't have any cigarettes. Ah, okay. Then he goes back the line again. I'm like, what the fuck? And comes up again and asks me the exact same question in the exact same way. Now I'm starting to get confused. I'm like, you just step aside, let me just deal with all the other customers. So I do. And then he asks me the exact same question again. With a completely straight face, right? Uh, There's a little nerdy, skinny, tall kid with glasses. And then I realized, after he, he asks me the question, right? And then a moment later, you could see, like, almost a tick. And then he asks me the exact same question again. Like, within the span of, like, 20 seconds. I'm like, wait a second. And then he does it again, right? This guy had a short-term memory so short that I've never experienced anything in my life like this. It was so weird. We talked about it for weeks. He was just like, hey, excuse me, sir, can I buy some uh, loose cigarettes? Ah, uh, okay. Excuse me, sir? Can I buy some loose cigarettes? And he just repeat that. And I felt so bad for him because he seemed like such a nice kid. And then I, I remember, I recall looking over at the newspapers. There was this, like, sort of meme on the front page. One of these uh, tabloids, that's the word. A uh, tabloid paper. And, and he was looking at this, this funny picture and laughing. like. <laughs> and then he would look up and forget about it. And then he would look down at the same picture. <laughs> <laughs> and he literally just stood there, entertained, for two and a half hours. I, I shit you not, for two and a half hours, he would just look at the same picture, laugh at it, forget about it, look down, laugh at it, and I thought, okay, you know what, that's a little bit of a silver lining, right? That's just a little bit, because I really felt so bad for him. And I thought, that's a nice silver lining. At least, imagine just looking at the same meme again and again, and being like, ha, 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 I just, I mean... Yeah, a little bit of a silver lining at least. Okay, number three. So, uh, <laughs> I started having these night shifts. And immediately, weird shit started happening, okay? So, one of my first night shifts, this uh, this guy walks in. He looks a little bit shady, right? But not uh, nothing too, like, far out of the ordinary. He walks in, walks past me. Like, good evening. He walks past me. He crouches down in the middle of the 7-Eleven, right? Like, like, a complete crouch. Then I'm like, sir? He doesn't respond. He grabs out a joint, right? I'm like, sir? Lights the joint. Like, sir? Like, lights it, takes a puff. And I swear to God, it's like the dude was sleepwalking and just woke up. He like, he, he, he lights the joint, takes a whiff, and he goes. He like, stands up like, in panic, looks at me, really confused, right? And then he runs out to 7-Eleven. I'm like, what the fuck just happened? Like, like, legitimate. Just walks in, crouches in the middle of a 7-Eleven, lights a joint, takes a puff, 
stands up really confused and runs out. The fuck? <laughs> I was like, did that just happen? Did I just see that? I'm not sure if I just saw that. I'm, I mean, I'm pretty sure I just saw that, but did that just happen? <laughs> like, after I just remember being like, wait, what? <laughs> um, and so you had these really, because this was such a rich area, you had these really self-entitled kids, right? And I have a very particular style of 7-Elevening, okay? Like, the first six months, I, I, I was like, I thought I had to earn the respect of these kids, because otherwise this is going to be horrific. Like, so I gave zero fucks in the first six months. And trust me, I, I'm glad that I did that. Like, like, you're technically, like, if you tell someone to leave and they don't want to leave, you're not allowed to touch them, theoretically. I would not give a fuck. I would push people out if I had to, because otherwise, all those, those kids, they would just not respect you, and then it was going to be a horrific job environment, essentially, right? Essentially, there was this one time where two kids, they they, uh, they were doing these patrons of laughter gas, was apparently big, right? It, it kills your brain cells, and I guess it gets you high for like a couple of minutes, is what I've heard. Haven't tried it myself ever, and I would not recommend it to anyone, because from what I've heard, it really just dumps you down. But there were these two kids, like only 14, 15 years old, in there talking to me, like, uh, you know, just hanging out in the 7-Eleven. That wasn't uncommon, right? Kids that don't have anywhere to go, they're not old enough to have their own place yet, yet they're like hanging out in the evenings, you know what I mean? Down at the gas station, or in this case, the 7-Eleven. And these kids were like hanging out in there and, and talking. I was talking a little bit with them. And then they like drop this thing on the floor and it starts whooshing around, like in a circle. And I just look at them and they're like freezing, like standing there looking at me, looking down. I'm like, Hello! You gotta fucking do something about it. They were just standing there, like, pretending like we couldn't all see and hear that there was this thing whizzing around on the floor. I'm like, are you gonna pick that the fuck up and get the fuck out of here? Like, like what the fuck? If you drop something, like, it's just whizzing around. And they just froze. I'm like, uh, could you pick that shit up? It's like, what the f- What is wrong with you? <laughs> like, why would you just stand there, like, Pretend like I can't clearly see that there's a patron of like lighter gas or laughter gas, whatever the fuck it is, uh, fl flying around in a circle on the floor. Like, my God, some of these kids were so stupid. <laughs> and then there was a day in the evening where I had my colleague with me because we, we were told that there were going to be two parties at two of the gymnasiums, right? And these two gymnasiums really hated each other. Like, they were like, it sounds stupid, but they were like rival gymnasiums, right? And the kids there sort of had, I don't know, they, they were competitive with each other, I guess. And a huge fucking fight broke out inside the 7-Eleven. And I think this is the loudest I've ever shouted in my whole life. Because 10 people literally started fighting in front of me inside the 7-Eleven. And my co-worker, who was also my boss, not my boss boss, but my just right under the boss. Like a second in command-ish, right? And she was a very small lady, right? So she wasn't going to do anything about it. And, and we, we had a generally, I, I don't like wasting the time of the police. I'm sure they have more important shit to do. Because uh, Denmark is generally, again, this might not relate to the United States. It, this is very different. But very rarely something's going to happen. That's actually serious. And these were just kids, right? So just a bunch of kids fighting inside a 7-Eleven. And so I, I slowly, like, calmly walked over. And then I yelled, like, as, as loudly as I possibly fucking could. Like... You get the fuck out of my... You, you know what I mean? And to my surprise, they were all like... And they all walked out! <laughs> we closed the door. We had to lock one of our doors. Because the fight continued outside. And, like, pro progressively got larger. And I, I swear to God, for like an hour and a half, there was like this build-up of people. And you had like 30 people on either side, like throwing bottles at each other and shit. And, and like, bumping into the window. And meanwhile, that was happening right here. Like, literally, right here, there's a window. Right? And it, meanwhile, I'm serving a customer right here, right? And actually trying to, to stay focused while there's like a bunch of people fighting right outside. It was so fucking weird. Um, then we had this one time. One of only two, t uh, two times I remember being actually slightly scared. Like having that bad feeling, you know? Not, not necessarily scared, but like having that, okay, shit, I, I, I'm just not gonna, you know... I don't feel comfortable with this, right? I'm not getting paid enough for this. Like, I chased people out of the shop when they were stealing, and I stopped a lot of people try trying to steal shit, and some of them got aggressive, some people were drunk. I didn't mind. But this guy walks in. He looks really weird, and he's looking at me really weird, right? 
I I'm talking like... Like that weird, right? We're not just talking... I'm not even over-exaggerating. I can see myself here. That's the level of like... And I'm trying to serve a customer and I'm like, he starts yelling at me. Are you giraffe? Hello, 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 you, 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 are you giraffe? Huh, huh, you, you giraffe? And like, and like, there was not a, sh a shred of irony in his, in his face, facial expression, right? He looked dead serious, like dead serious. You giraffe? Hello, hello, you giraffe? And I was like, that guy's a fucking psychopath. I'm like, I'm just not, I'm not gonna inject, like the way he walked, there was just something, you know, like really, really aggressive yet in like a psychotic way, you could just, something was really just not well up here. And that's one of the only instances in my life where I'm like, I'm just not engaging with that person. I'm just completely gonna ignore him because I don't know, that that, that guy, he might, I mean, I doubt it, but he, but he might give me a hug and love me or he might stab me in the throat 37 times. I have no idea. Anything in between is possible, right? Um, and, and I remember there just thinking, nope. Not not gonna engage with that guy. Like I was just, I'm not getting paid enough for that. And then we had the 15 year old girl stealing Bacardi breezers. Now, this is something I enjoyed a lot about working oddly enough. It was educating and, and sort of raising a little bit some of these more moronic kids. And I was as dumb when I was 15. So again, no hate whatsoever. I even got caught stealing when I was 14. And what my mom did was instead of calling the police, she forced me to walk up to the shop owner, look him in the eye, tell him what I'd done, and apologize. And I never fucking did that again. It was so embarrassing. And and, uh, and again, because I hung up with the wrong type of people around when I was 14, that's when I started getting into some trouble, right? And hanging around some some, some bad people. I never considered myself a bad person. I was ne I've never been violent or anything like that ever in my life. But I just started hanging out in bad circles, right? So, so I also knew some of the, you know, I knew what people did when they tried to steal, right? And the, these girls were so, it was so obvious. Like the way they looked up in the mirror to see if I was looking at them, right? You could just immediately spot it. And to my surprise, when I stopped her, uh, this is what surprised me the most, because I, I was on the other side of the counter, on the side where you have to go all the way around to actually get out the shop. And so when I, am are you going to pay for those Bacardi breezers? And to my surprise, she started running. And I was like, oh, you should not have done that. Because <laughs> she was wearing stilettes, right? So I literally just jogged after her. And immediately, like, I'm, I, I'm a pretty fast runner, right? I'm a tall guy, I have long legs. And, and I ran after her and I immediately caught up with her, right? And she just starts screaming in panic, ah! Right? I, I, and I'm like, <laughs> I just keep yelling, drop the bag, drop the bag. And she did, she dropped her bag with all the Bacardi breezes in it. So I just took her back. And I just slowly walked back to my 7-Eleven. Lo and behold, like 10, 15 minutes later, her friend comes in, right? Uh, so not the one that I've been chasing, but her friend, who had also been in the shop trying to distract me, right? So, and she walks in, and you could just see they've just been negotiating. Okay, what, what do we do? What do we do, right? And she, she walked in there with a purpose. She walked straight up to me like, uh, excuse me, that's actually my back, and uh, uh, I need my stuff, so uh, please give me my things. I'm like... Uh, how about fuck no? <laughs> like, that's not your bag, and I don't care even if it is your bag. It's not, you're not the person that I took it from. So I'm sorry, and as she goes, uh, you can't just take my, th uh, sh shut up. Shut up, girl. Shut up. Right now, okay? You have two options. Option A, you go out to your friend, right? And you tell her to come in here, look me in the eyes, tell me I'm sorry for stealing your shit and making you run after me at 3 a.m. in the morning. Or... You don't do that. In which case, I'll have to give this back over to my boss when he arrives at six o'clock in the morning, at which point he will call the police, at which point the police will call her parents, at which point you'll be in a load of fucking shit. So, you choose. <laughs> and she walks out, comes in like 20 minutes later, like, I don't know if she could, I don't care. She's gonna come in here and apologize, or she's gonna get reported to the police. You, you choose, like, it's not my problem. 10 minutes later, she walked in looking in the ground, like, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm like, look me in the eyes. I'm sorry, right? And I guarantee you, like, like she would have been, she should, in theory, have been banned from the 7-Eleven. 
I didn't do that. It's the only it's the only place that had open uh, like in the night, Fridays and Saturdays. And I was like, if there's one person I am not afraid of ever stealing anything ever again from my son Lemon. That's gonna be that girl. <laughs> I never have to worry about her again. <laughs> oh, absolutely enjoyed that part of the job. <laughs> Like I thought, you know, because I've been a moronic kid, right? And I thought, oh, that's a little bit of fun, right? That's a little... I know I shouldn't have enjoyed that, but I, part of me really, really did. And that was a similar story with some boys that went there and, like, talking to me for a, bun for a while, right? And then suddenly they were in a hurry. And I'd seen one of the dudes, you know, those chocolate bars that are, like, right in the front, right? In the counter, right ne next to it. And they were, like, leaning up against it, right? And I could, like, see, how, uh, hear a little bit of scramble and see how his arms were moving. And all of a sudden, one of them, oh, uh, uh, that's our train, let's go. And I'm like, <laughs> wait a second, are you going to pay for those sneakers? And he just completely freezes, like, uh, what sneakers? Shut up. Stop talking. Are you going to pay for those sneakers? Or are you going to put them back? I don't have, uh, do I really need to come the fuck over there and pull out those sneakers from your, from your, I'm not fucking stupid. Stop pretending like I'm a fucking moron, okay? I know I've just said I'm a moron, but... <laughs> and he, he was just he just completely froze. Completely froze. Didn't know what to do. I'm like, dude, I don't have time. Will you please just put them back? And he put them back, right? <laughs> oh, so much fun. Mm, I don't know why, but I really enjoyed that. <laughs> for some weird... For some weird reason. Then we have that one time when I was assaulted by, like, a 17-year-old girl. Yep, that really happened. So here's the story. It's the second last. It's like 3 a.m., 3 right? And keep in mind that, like, I was a really effective worker. Like, when I saw a line, I would just kill that line as quickly as possible, right? Because I'm, I'm quick with my fingers, and, and the amount of breaks... Like, the extent to which I could have, even have a break, was dependent on how effective I was at my work, right? Uh, because when there when were customers, there were customers. And there, you can't have a break when there are customers. And people were using the 7-Eleven, and that's also why I told you about the train station, as a personal waiting room, right, for the trains, which it's not, I should add. And there was this girl on, on a particularly stressful day, right, where there's been so many people, and I hadn't had a single break for like five and a half hours. And, and, and then there's this one girl who walks in over to like the, the counter where we've put up the chairs upside down to indicate that no, to, now you can't eat here anymore. You can buy your stuff and you can move on with life, right? And she didn't care. She just grabs one of the chairs and, and sits down. So I walk over to her and I politely tell her, uh, excuse me, I'm sorry, but uh, you can't wait here tonight. And she just looks at me. And looks back and keeps staring out the window, right? I'm like, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, but you can't wait here. She ignores me. I'm like, uh, hello, ex excuse me, you, you can't wait in the 7-Eleven right now. And then her phone rings. And she picks up her phone. Hey, dad. Right? And starts talking with her dad. And I'm politely just standing there looking straight at her, right? You're just doing the face stare, right? Uh, um, and just wait politely for two minutes until she hangs up her phone. I'm like, excuse me, you can't wait here, right? I almost yell at her into her face, uh, and she ignores me, so I grab her arm, and then she goes, oh, you can't touch me, right? I'm like, oh, hell yeah, I can. Yeah, I think, well, what do you think? Like, what the fuck? You th you're just standing there talking to your dad. I'm talking to you. Fucking respond. Like, and she just goes berserk, right? And, uh, like, starts making a huge scene in the middle of the... Oh, you can't touch me. What are you? Like, a perfect... I don't care if you think I'm a perfect... If you don't get the fuck out of my 7-Eleven, I'm gonna fucking push you out, right? And she starts getting aggressive up in my face. And I start getting aggressive up in her face. I'm like, this bitch fucking... Like, I... Could just, just imagine the kind of bitch it takes... So Excuse my language, but it takes to just stand there, ignore you 100%, pretend like you're not there, then pick up her phone in the next moment, talk to her, hang up, and still pretend like you're just not talking to her in your shop, right? <sighs> so I eventually managed to get her out, right? I'm like, oh my god, finally, get her out, right? Then I realize she's sitting on the staircase right outside. And she suddenly brings a bunch of friends, right? 
and her and all of her like I've told her to fuck off I, I don't want to see you here tonight right but then her friends arrive and her friends go into the shop to buy alcohol right and she goes with them comes back in with her friends and I'm like nope ah, you get the fuck out of my son alone I don't want to look at you and she's like Oh, but I haven't done it. Shut up. Stop pretending like you don't fucking know that I just get, like, get the fuck out. And she refuses. So I'm like, fair enough. Then I guess your friends aren't buying alcohol. And then, oh, you can't take that. Oh, yes, I can. Either you get your friend to leave this fucking 7-Eleven right fucking now, or none of you are going to get any, going to buy anything. Like, I don't, I don't give a fuck. I'm not going to sell anything to any of you if you can't keep a hold of your fucking friend. Like, I don't care. So they push her out, like they get her out really reluctantly. They actually get her to leave. And I'm about to sell her some stuff, like in a bunch of, uh, it was a very busy evening, as I said, like there were a bunch of people here now. And she's really drunk, I think. She, so they start drinking. She comes in back later, right? In the middle of a line, I mean, with a bunch of other customers. And she just walks out, pushes the lady, and just tries to hit me in my face. And I just managed to, like, you know, dodge backwards. And, like, and she starts, like, crawling over the counter, right? I shit you not, like, full, full on zombie bitch mode, right? So she's crawling over the counter, and her friends had to grab her clothing and, like, pull her down and back, right? <laughs> it was so. I, like, it's one of the only instances in which I, I thought, should I call the police? Like, I, I, I'm not sure. Uh, like, I didn't. But I really thought, about, I was like, God damn, like, sh what the fuck is wrong with people, right? Like, the self-entitlement of this bitch is, the, I'm sorry for calling it, but, but really, that is the definition of a motherfucking bitch, okay? And the, the worst part is she kept trying to get back into the 7-Eleven on several occasions, even though I was like, no, I don't want to look at you until you've apologized, right? Like, if, if you apologize, all good, right? I'm a large I'm, I'm not going to blame you, if, but until then... I don't want to look at your fucking face, right? Because again, it's about that respect. Otherwise, people are going to trample you when you're on your own on a night shift in a 7-Eleven. Um, and the last story I want to tell really quickly is uh, about New Year's Eve. I had a shift at 5 o'clock on the 1st of January that I very reluctantly were, was forced to take. I've been discussing, like, I've been saying, no, I don't want to work that day. And, and my boss has just given it to me, right? Essentially screwed me over I, I draw the la I drew the, the shortest straw uh, so to speak because no one wants that shift now uh, I had nonetheless been at the party that I planned to go to despite the fact that I had a shift the following day to close the shop and at this point in my life I had actually quit doing like drugs and stuff like that so that that wasn't a problem anymore but this was New Year's Eve so let me just I took a liberty or two right so I ended up like I saw a bunch of my old friends and essentially I smoked a bunch of weed, and I did do some cocaine, and I got drunk as fuck. So, next day arrives, and I still haven't slept. And I'm like, I have the decision to make, right? I can either go to work, pretty fucked up, or I could call in sick, and the whole sort of, the whole thing would land on my boss to, to you know, to cover for me. And, 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 you know, you probably know why, right? Because, like, if you call in sick on the 1st of January, after, like, having argued three or four times about whether or not to take the shift, then you know, I mean, he's not stupid, right? So uh, that would be very obvious. So instead, I manned up, I went to work, and I told my coworker the truth. I was like, eh, just, you know, you know I, this and that, and I'd actually done some... You know, and she's a little bit shocked, but I, I'd rather be honest, right? So I told her. And then there was this Asian lady who came to buy a ticket. She was sure, absolutely certain, that she'd given me a thousand kroners. And she was supposed to have her money back, and I gave it back to her, but I gave her 800 back. Because she had only given me 800. But she was certain she'd given me a thousand, right? And so she had called in, I, I like, it for we're talking about hours where she stayed and, and, and wanted, you know, to get that 200 kroner that wasn't there. And I, I'm sorry, there were only, that was only 800. Um, and I, it ended up with me having to say, you're going to have to call my boss this Monday. There's, I'm sorry, there's nothing else to do. Um, I can't help you. We're going to have to look at the security footage. That's all I can do, right? So, so my boss was talking about that. And as I understand this, so I'm at home, right? But as I understand it, my boss had been talking about this instance and looking at the security footage. And in that context, my colleague had accidentally mentioned that I had said that thing with cocaine and been like, 
because she didn't mean to tell my boss, right? But she had, at which point she'd been questioned by my boss, at which point she told him the truth, at which point I go to work the following day and get pulled in for a conversation with my boss, not knowing any of this, right? I, I don't know any of this. I just get pulled in for like, Michael, I need to talk to you. I sit down and he just looks me in my face and goes, Michael, were you uh, sober for uh, first of January shift? I'm like, oh fuck, right? <laughs> But I tell him the truth, I'm like, no, I was not. And he's like, what had you been doing? I I'm, I'm told him I'd been drunk, I'd been smoking weed, and uh, I'd done some cocaine. And he looks at me like, why, right? And, like, and I told him the truth. I could have either screwed you over, or I could have manned up and gone to, gone to work. And he's like, but you're not, a, like, you do know that going to work under the influence like that, that that's legitimately reason for me to fire you right here, right now. Actually, I should have to fire you right here, right now. I'm like, yeah, I know. But am I talking to you here because I didn't do my job properly? Because I looked in the mirror and I was like, and, and I evaluated, do I feel like I could perform my job function right now? Yes or no? And the answer to that was yes. So I manned up and I went to work despite really not wanting to. So I ask you, did you pull me into this conversation because I didn't do my work properly? Or did you do it because there was an Asian lady who who, um, who needed 200 kroners back? Uh, who thought that I, I took 200 kroners from her? And he's like, I mean, you, as far as I know, you did do your job properly. Okay, then what's the problem? And he could see, I was like, I guess. I, I don't like it, but, but I, I guess you have a point. <laughs> and I ended up getting off scot-free and my whole work Everyone was just talking about how I somehow managed to go to work and, and, and sit in a, with a straight face having a conversation with my boss where I told him that I was both high drunk and fucked up on cocaine <laughs> at work. <laughs> Cause like, and he looked at the footage and I, she only gave me 800 and I gave her 800 back, right? So there was no problem I and mean, I had performed my job function. I'd done everything I should. So like, he could see my rationale, right? I was like, I told him that it's not something I would normally do. It was because it was New Year's Eve. I apologize. But, like, the alternative was screwing you over, forcing you to go to work when really it was my shift, right? So, so yeah, those are the 10 top 10 mad mad moments I had in my 7 Eleven. Hope you guys enjoyed. And as always, I love you guys. Stay awesome. Peace out.